Um, right. Welcome everybody. This is Drink Georgian and me, Daria. Today I am in a new location. This is Wine Bar Wine Exchange in Saburtalo in my basically home area of Tbilisi and I'm very excited to start working with them. So the first tasting that we are doing from here is um, a tasting of one or actually two very interesting regions which is Bolnisi and Asureti. Both of them are PDOs, quite recently established ones. And I remember that some of you wrote me in the comments that you would like to learn more about the Georgian PDOs, about the Appalachian system. So I decided to start from like the recent ones because the recent ones will be used more and more and you might see more of them on the shelves in your respective countries shops. Uh, of course, the classics that we were talking about recently, like in the context of Saperavi, so Mokuzani, Marauli, Hashmi, all that, it's also there, but uh, my mission, my task, my hobby is to highlight things that are more obscure and hence more interesting for me. So, today we talk about Bolnisi and Asureti and why did I decide to combine them under one umbrella is uh, because they both were German colonies. So I will start with the short excursion <laughs> and into the story of Germans in Georgia. Basically it all started in the end of the 18th uh, century when uh, Catherine II, the Empress of Russia, was uh, already like starting the project of uh, resettling Germans to the Russian Empire, to different territories, just to kind of improve uh, things in the regions because as you know Germans have the reputation of uh, very hard working diligent people, good farmers. Uh, to Georgia this idea came only in the early 19th century so the Emperor Alexander I and uh, Alexei Yermolov, the, uh, his viceroy in Caucasus decided to uh, populate some areas that were more or less empty exactly with the farmers. So uh, farmers, good skilled craftspeople, uh, those were kind of the focus groups for this um, project and uh, in Tbilisi there were two colonies, uh, Neutiflis and Alexanderdorf on the left bank of Mtkwari and you can see, still see some traces of um, kind of German architecture there and also uh, the structure of Ahmashenebeli area uh, is so that it repeats actually the garden uh, gardens of German kind of silhouettes of the garden. So that's kind of when you look at it from above from Google Maps, you can definitely see where the kind of plots of land, separate plots of land that used to belong to German colonists were. But we are talking about the regions today and uh, Asureti or Elisabethal and Bolnisi, Katarinenfeld, uh, they were some like really prominent parts of this German colonies projects. So what was interesting about both of them? Uh, Asureti is actually a nice, very nice place to visit at the moment. It's a uh, right, like slightly warmer, sunnier place. Uh, the colonists living there were uh, not only farmers, so they were also doing crafts, but there was uh, in the like in the end of the 19th century there was already a big factory uh, that was producing wine. It's still there and it's a kind of a national monument, but unfortunately it's not a, like very good condition at the moment. I hope that it will get a second life uh, very soon. So this big winemaking facility shows that winemaking was really big there, and the innovation that Germans brought to Asureti, among other places, was that they started making wine in wooden casks. That was not typical for Georgia at all. As you know, we are Quevri people here, so uh, especially people like really uh, like from rural areas, they would rather use Quevri than uh, invest a lot of money in the wooden barrel, plus Caucasian oak was not optimal uh, for making wine in it, it was like, it, it, it gives the wine a very harsh taste. Uh, and of course nobody had money for French barrels, but Alexander Chavchavadze and Ivan Mohran Batoni, the founders of uh, Chavchavadze of Tsinandali uh, winery and uh, Chateau Mohrani. So except of the nobility, basically the access to this modern technologies was very limited. But for German, it was not kind of modern advanced technology, it was something that they knew really well. So they actually started making wine in barrels. And uh, also exactly Asureti is related to one very important uh, 
moment in uh, actually both those microzones. Uh, the grape variety that we know as Asuratuli Shavi, the Georgian grape variety, was discovered by a German uh, winemaker called Otto Schall. Uh, he found it in the forest and he replanted it uh, in a cultural way uh, and made it accessible to people. The trickiness of this variety is that it's uh, female, so biologically. So it means that in order for it to bring fruit, you need to plant it next to Chinuri or Gurulim Tsuane or some other grape varieties that are uh, hermaphrodite. So they kind of have flowers of both sexes and so they can pollinate uh, themselves. Uh, so Suratulu Shavi needs a partner a committed partner in order to bear fruits and then become this amazing wine. Actually, I really like it. Uh, so it's not that I'm advertising here. <laughs> I, I really like Asuratulu Shavi. Uh, when I was there for the first time in 2018, uh, we hiked there from Belize with my husband. And uh, actually, people there were kind of not really aware of the treasure that was just basically under their feet. So when you talk to people who live in the town, they would be like, yeah, there were Germans they made some wine, now we are only making wine for home a bit. Uh, so they were kind of not even thinking about making it commercial. As for now, there are several wineries that produce wine under the brand Asuratulu Shavi or Asuratulu Shala. So the, this new PDO is also incorporating this story with Otto Schall, the person who discovered this grape variety and I find it um, uh, kind of a good way to connect the land, the story and the people in a glass of wine. Uh, so uh, if you see on the bottle Asurutuli Shala, what does it mean? It means that 85% uh, of uh, the grapes that participated in the winemaking were Asurutuli Shavi. And then up to 15% it's possible to add Tavkveri or Shavkapito, the other grape varieties typical for that area. Uh, but it can be also 100% Asuratuli, as I see in both cases here on my table. Uh, so the wine can be made in the wood or in quevery or in stainless steel, so this is not regulated. But it's important is the quality of the grape, the time of the harvest and correspondingly the amount of sugar. So the amount of sugar when you pick should be not less than 19. So in the end you get like 12-13% of alcohol uh, once you pick it on the like higher of 20 plus. Uh, also, like I would say that Asureti is quite a hot and warm place in summer, uh, but the soils there can retain uh, water really well. So once it rains, uh, the soil captures this water and uh, the roots have the chance to, to feed themselves, so to say, to feed the wines. Uh, also, there is another famous winery that has vineyards in the Sureti area. Uh, this is Gotha's Winery, one of very few bio uh, biodynamic um, certified by Demeter wineries in Georgia. So Gotza has all his grapes, not necessarily uh, only Asuratuli and like Saparavi. He has like many, many varieties, 17 varieties in one very, very dry spot nearby Asureti. And uh, even though he's working maximally naturally, he had to install irrigation, so hot and dry it is. But uh, Asoreti actually quite a small microzone, so it includes the town of Asoreti and like very close surroundings, so not several villages like Bolnisi, for example. Uh, so Asoreti is a like tiny, tiny place, uh, tiny, dry, but uh, very interesting. And yeah, as I said, Asuratulu Shavi, not less than 85%, and potentially you can use Shav Capito or Tavkveri. So who do I have here on my table as the samples? Actually, there are not so many people that uh, put the name Asuratuli on the label, but I found some, uh, and one of them is Marbano, uh, here run by Levan Vanzeladze. This winery is actually located in Bolnisi, but it's allowed to uh, bottle and work with the wines, uh, with the wine not necessarily in Asureti. So Levan doesn't have to kind of move his winery to Asureti in order to put it on the label. But Bolnisi and Asureti are very close, so it's like still uh, within the allowed limits. But for example, you cannot um, bottle Asuratuli somewhere nearby, like in, uh, in the other country because Asureti is also like it is southeastern Georgia 
so it's in the border with Azerbaijan and Armenia. And if you decide that you want to make, uh, like, to build a wine facility there and kind of work with two countries, no, it's not allowed. And uh, of course, like those counterfeit stories that I've heard that Georgian wines are being bottled in Poland, Russia, Germany, whatever, like in many places, then it doesn't make certain wines Georgian and belong into this place anymore. So. Uh, Levan lives in, for example, Nisi, and Gocali Parteliani, the second winemaker, does as well. He has his own wine project winery called Golden Fleece, but unfortunately the bottles were sold out in wine exchange. So I took another bottle of him, and it's made, it's bottled for the project called Wine People. It's run by Teliani Veli, a well-known big winery. Uh, and I really appreciate this project actually because it gives the platform to the small wineries. It collects high quality wines, uh, gives them marketing exposure, decent bottling uh, opportunities, and yeah, it unites uh, seven, like several regions or concepts under one umbrella. So wine people Bolnisi included several winemakers from that area, and there was also the women in wine uh, line, and I, I find it very interesting. So Gocelli Partelliani bottled his vintage 2018 exactly for this very project. Um, this one is slightly more uh, fine, I would say, than the Golden Fleece. Golden Fleece is more joyful, younger. This one was already in the barrel for longer, for almost one year longer, and aged in the bottle too. And it, this one is more uh, friendly to the European palate, or probably even those who are used to a lot of oak, like this mild, round oak in the wine. Actually, Marbano also works with oak. Uh, which is quite typical for that area because uh, even though there are no Germans in Asoreti and Bolnisi anymore, they were deported by Stalin in uh, 1941 to Kazakhstan and Siberia. Uh, and then uh, people from Russia were encouraged, you know, like I, I use it, the word ironically, uh, kind of removed resettled there. Uh, Lipartaliani is the surname from that very area, like uh, Racha, Svaneti border. And um, yeah, so Bocha made this wine and Levan made this wine, but uh, they are based in Bolnisi and then it brings me to this area. But first, let's take a sip of Asuratuli and see what's there and why is it so special. So what I like about um, any types of asuratuli I tasted, that it's very like berry forward, uh, not necessarily fruity, but exactly berries, often cooked berries, um, sometimes wild strawberry as well. And in uh, when I was reading the reviews of users about asuratuli shavi, many of them were mentioning actually even the spices. Uh, I wouldn't say that it's the super spicy wine, but definitely there is a hint of uh, red pepper sometimes. To me, it depends on yeah who, who is making it and how much it's spent in the wood, but yeah, a hint is always there. So yeah, this is a Suratuli. You see, it's also, it's kind of dark ruby, uh, but not as dark as, for example, Saperavi. Uh, it's a medium body to full usually. And uh, yeah, I could definitely recommend you to taste it. It's a very promising grape variety and I hope there will be more of it on the market soon. And once we are moving to Bolnisi, I should also say that uh, Bolnisi is much broader area style-wise for wine. Because if here you work only with one maximum, like uh, three varieties, uh, and you make it in kind of a unified style. Bolnisi wine can be amber, can be white, can be rosé, can be red. Here I have uh, three examples for you. Uh, actually, not of, of them even say Bolnisi on the label, but uh, yeah, as this is a very young PDO, I just want to showcase several producers and yeah, probably in the future they would use their common name much more because otherwise you rather see them as a union represented on different uh, industry events like travel, uh, not travel, uh, wine fairs and yeah, wine tourism fairs. Bolnisi is represented as the destination rather than uh, like certain like, like special wineries. Uh, so there is no white Bolnisi to show you because mostly people there work with Quevri in the traditional way, so in skin contact way, and also they use the oak barrels to kind of round up 
the taste. What I also find interesting about Bolnisi is that these uh, winemakers are working in the living and working in these old German houses, houses built by the German settlers. So once you visit a wine cellar, it's actually a very deep cellar with very traditional like uh, wooden panels, something actually that we see behind me, <laughs> very similar style. Um, yeah, very deep, very cold cellars. And, uh, for example, Guram from Zmebis Marani, from Brothers Cellar, is even uh, preserving one um, barrel from German times. But uh, luckily he's not making wine in it, because the barrel is really, really old. So he makes wine in Quevri and uh, rounding it up eventually. Um, so in this case, it's coming from Ortasheni. It's a like, small vineyard uh, growing area nearby Bolnisi, so this area is much bigger than Asureti. Uh, and um, yeah, basically, maybe Smarania started from 2016. Yeah, we'll give you a chance to look at the label better. So it's quite a young winery. Uh, Guram and Georgi, the founders of it, are very active people, very energetic, uh, and I hope that uh, yeah, they will have more. Uh, wine adventure they will offer us more interesting wines soon. So uh, for me Rkacitelli from Bolnisi is the very different one if you compare it to skin contact Rkacitelli from Cajeti for example. So that's why I have exactly this one here. Oh, Rkacitelli from Bolnisi reminds me on uh, a meadow of chamomile. Uh, like uh, something uh, herbal, slightly herbal, slightly flowery. Uh, also, like uh, it has this honeyish um, tones in it, and it's not as heavy as Cajetian wine. So, of course, sometimes you want this like really full-bodied amber wine, but sometimes no, it's not the case. And uh, here comes Bolnisi, a really good introduction wine, a wine with milder tannins, uh, not so much body even if it's made on 100% of skins. So uh, to me, this is one of the best uh, Arcacitellis in Georgia. Like, sorry, Cajetians, you know that I love you, but <laughs> Bolnisi Arcacitelli is one of my recent big crushes. Uh, however, you can make amber and white Bolnisi also from Chinuri and Gorulim Tsvana, the other white varieties growing there. But mostly people there work with Rkacitelli, that's what I see from my experience. Also Bolnisi can be rosé. This is a very interesting label. Uh, Muhiguli Winery, so, so Muhiguli Shvili, uh, is honoring some uh, artifacts from his old house. Uh, and he's making rosé from Asuratuli Shavi actually from this grape variety. So the red grapes you can actually use in uh, Bolnisi microzone in order to put Bolnisi on the label. Those are Saperavi, Asuratuli Shavi, Tavkweri and Shavkapita. Those four and only those four. Um, so I think, yeah, so so might add the name Bolnisi Rosé on the label soon, we will see. Anyways, this Rosé is really Interesting also fruit forward, berry forward, definitely a lot of strawberry jam inside there. So if we see here strawberries, like already like cooked strawberries, uh, wild strawberries, those are more like cultural strawberries, <laughs> uh, I would say like, uh, and this is not as spicy, but is also very pleasant to drink, very light. To be honest, like uh, I kind of try to support Georgian roses, but some of them are really not that um, fun to drink because they're quite heavy, especially when they're made of saperavi. That's why I especially appreciate when people work with the lighter grape varieties and uh, create beautiful uh, summer wines, beautiful wines for like a light lunch on weekend. Uh, so thank you Soso for this fine example. And the last Bolnisi Red Shavkapito's special reserve is coming from Barbale Winery. Again, uh, Berdia, the founder of this winery, is not putting Bolnisi on the label yet as a PDO name, but everything screams Bolnisi when you take this bottle. Because first of all, there is this Bolnisi cross on it. Uh, so in Bolnisi there is also a very important small church. Uh, Bolnisi Sioni, uh, where the, this cross was found for the first time on the Georgian territory and also there are some of the oldest inscriptions 
in Georgian language. So the place is very important historically and that's why Bolnisi winemakers and food makers and craft makers are often using this Bolnisi cross, um, yeah, Bolnisi cross in their, on their product. Actually, I'm wearing Bolnisi cross too. <laughs> so uh, yeah, this is a very important symbol for Georgia. Uh, but so yeah, what's in this bottle? In this bottle, there, e there is a quite um, light, fine, aromatic uh, fruit forward, like red fruit forward wine. Berdia is working with Kvevri and Barrel, so be sure that your tannins will be pretty round and the wine will get enough oxygen during the winemaking process so it won't be suffocated once you open the bottle. Berdia is working on the natural yeast uh, and growing the grapes according to organic principles. Uh, so uh, this is kind of the winery principles I like, but also yeah, be sure that like all the swines need to be stored and transported correspondingly. So you cannot just throw them under the sun um, in some open space and think that they will taste amazing um, after several days like this or also like if you buy a bottle in Georgia and take to your country don't think that you should need to open it immediately on the dinner after you're back because um, because then the wine will not be the same so I would say give it a rest it's not all of those are not heavily stabilized give it a rest give it some time keep it in the cool temperature and then uh, yeah the, those two can be cooled down more this one should be served like on the 14 degrees Celsius approximately um, and then you will give your guests and yourself a like, proper evening of a good Bolnisi wine. Ah, Shavka Pita is also one of my favorite varieties. I think in one of the uh, next videos I um, will be talking about actually Georgian reds that are overlooked because there is the huge um, Hulk <laughs> named Saperavi standing just in front of them and while Saperavi is an excellent grape variety there is still room for more and it's not only Asuratulia and Shavkapito there is um, like the whole lineup so I think I will be able to share it with you very soon thank you very much for staying with me for yeah almost 20 minutes already uh, and I hope that uh, you will taste the wines from Asureti and Bolnisi sometime and you will like them. Right, stay safe and drink Georgian. Kagi Marjat. <laughs>